Hi, I'm Tony Fleming and welcome to Fleming's Ultimate Garage. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us on I Should Have Bought It When I Saw It. Anyway, before we get started on the walk around presentation of this car and you get to see all this great detail about probably one of the nicest ones we've ever had, click on the subscribe button right here or the like button as well. This way we can send you some information. A lot of times you get information before anybody else will because we put that there first and uh, you'll be in the know, all right? So as we talk about a car like this, we say, well, uh, there are other cars like that out there. Well, you could say yes, but not really. This car here probably has almost every option you could possibly get from the factory. It was very expensive for 2005, not to mention it's a collector car. You say, well, Tone, how could you possibly determine it's a collector car? Well, you're right. I can't predict the future, but I can tell you this, that 2005 is the last year for this wide body car. The turbo and this car was the last run of these uh, models, right? And when we see cars with ridiculously low mileage like this and we see them loaded with equipment, we have found in the past that they continue to go up in value. And the great thing about it is you can drive a car like this. It doesn't cost you a lot of money to own it, especially in today's day. We're doing this video in 2020. It's 15 years later, right? These cars here right now are starting around 130000 130000 for a C4S Cabriolet. This is a great bargain. All right, let's start with the black basalt metallic paint. So instead of it being flat black paint, this right here has metallic built into it. It is beautiful. They charge a lot for it. So let's come and check it out so you can see uh, how beautiful and how clear the factory paint is. All right, so see how you can read every letter nice and crystal clear. Not that you can read it, but read it crystal clear in there. You can see the lights from our building up in there, the ceiling detail. That's the kind of stuff you should be looking for. All right, so let's walk around a little bit more and talk about some things. Uh, there are so a lot of pluses on this car and there's one tiny negative and I want to point out the negative to you because you know what? Not every car is perfect and come on over here and I'm going to show you that. These are color matched wheels. They would have come from the factory as well. And I noticed that the colored crests, okay, colored crests had come off. We have one uh, there. So we've ordered these, but they have to be color matched uh, to paint those. You can't just buy the crest. Uh, cross drilled rotors. Uh, just when I look at these cars, because they're wide body cars to begin with, remember this is the same as a turbo body car, right? It just doesn't have the holes in the quarters there for the intercoolers. And these right here are just very different. The convertible top, we're going to look at how that works. And in the meantime, uh, let's take a peek under the hood and in the engine compartment because these are really what called daily driver exotics. And now you're going to see why. All right, so come on up here. Check this out for a second. All right, so this is an important feature. I don't know if you see this right here, but this decal has the codes on it of how the car was built. So you say, well, why is that a big deal? Well, the reason that's a big deal is because you can't buy that sticker anymore. So if this car had been in an accident and this hood had been replaced or refinished, then this decal would be gone. The fact of the matter is it's still there and that's what we want to be looking for, all right? And then they finish it nicely in here, okay? Here's the original spare tire, it's never been down. The nipples are still on it. Here is the jack here. This is kind of cool too for us gentlemen because I don't really want to wreck those nails, gloves if we had to change the tire, air compressors in there, all of the original equipment is in there. It's just nicely finished, right? And then uh, if you ever need the battery, it's located right inside here. They just unclips there. These headlights, I feel like this year when they finally change this, it looked really good. And then when we close the hood, I always just close it like this. That way I don't get handprints all over my hood. All right, so let's talk about the width of this car. This is one of the things I love so much about these. We call this the J-Lo sports cars because it is absolutely wall to wall, just car. This right here, optional spoiler here. We add this touch here. It comes with a gray S. That's our signature touch. We can put it back to a gray one if you like. This also has the upgraded exhaust and polished tips on it, right? And just when you look at this car from behind, especially when you're a car behind this car, it is so wide.
A lot of people don't really know how wide body a wide body car is. I just did a quick comparison here just so you can see an old school fabulous 911 and a C4S that is why. All right, so you're not gonna do a lot of work from here because most everything is uh, done underneath, but the reason I wanted to show you this is because how clean it was. Like you can detail a car, but if you're not taking care of it or slow miles, you're gonna get crusty things and what have you. This is all nicely original. Even all the stampings and markings, the stickers are still here right from the factory circa uh, 2005. And this is 2020 where you're doing this video. This is 15 years old this car is with only 23,000 miles on it. It's a little over 1,000 miles a year this car has been driven, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. I want to talk about a couple things on the car that I really feel make a difference. This car versus many other sports cars are out there. First off, this is the front of the convertible top that sits right here. This is a high performance car. This is a, you know, depending on what you read, 160 to 180 mile an hour car, right? This right here is hard. Uh, which I like and so when it's here it doesn't buff it at high speed so it's nice and quiet right and back here it doesn't move around either this is rollover protection so these are roll bars if the car was to tilt right these would pop up and if the car tilted and it was everything was okay and you need to put it back put them back down you just crank this back down and they go right back down in there if you don't need the seating back here this is actually a little better I think looking when it's done as a package shelf. Just looks really nice and finished. They carpet everything in here. You can throw a couple more bags back here if you wanted to as well. So then uh, you can go away for the weekend. So as we get inside the car now, all right. The one thing uh, that people love about these cars is they're cars for big people. Like for instance, like I'm 6'1", and like if I want to get in here, right, I still have so much room. I have a huge amount of headroom and everything fits me just right. All right, we have our 8,000 RPM tack right there to be looking at, um, you know, 200 mile an hour speedometer. This is a high performance sports car, but let's talk about the luxury part, the Bose sound system that's in the car. This has a full leather interior, meaning that the seats are leather, of course they are, but the door panels are leather, the dash is leather, okay? All of these pieces around the car are leather. This has a painted console, which is an option, which why it looks so nice. So everybody will always say, wow, that's a great looking car, but they don't know why it's a great looking car. It's these little touches, like these painted uh, silver pieces on the door here, the center stack, the color match dash, all of that stuff kind of adds up to a beautiful, beautiful experience. This has carbon fiber pieces from the factory as well as an option. Again, this was a very expensive car during its time, hence one of the reasons why I feel it's a great collector car. A couple small additional touches. We have heated seats right here, right? We have Porsche stability management. All of these are options. This right here, the Porsche stability management is nice because if the car starts to slide, it can break individually each corner of it, bring the car back into line, okay? A lot of people say, well, why is the key on the left-hand side? I always like to tell the story of why that is, right? So back in the day of Grand Prix racing, the cars would be on one side of the track, the drivers would be on the other side of the track, and you would run across to your car, start your car, put it in gear, and go. Porsche figured out that if they put the key in here first and started it, they could put it in gear at the same time, getting that one second advantage to get out in front, and it always stayed with the road cars, and that's one of the great features of them. So as we close up the video in here, we're talking about so many options, so many things we forgot to talk about. All-wheel drive, wide body, the special full leather interior, the Bose sound system, the turbo twist wheels that are color matched, the ridiculously low miles on the car. This is exactly how to buy a Porsche because we know somebody loved this car, it's well taken care of, and it's uh, incredibly priced especially compared to a brand new one. So anyway, I'd love to hear your comments about this uh, down below. Let's talk about that. All right, call us 301-816-1000, and we'll do our best to turn this into this.